go to Renee in Omaha, Nebraska, listening on Spirit Catholic Radio 102.7. Renee, you're on with Jimmy Aiken. Thank you. Thank you so much for telling us about halos. That was a beautiful question. And thank you for donating your services to God. They are amazing, Jimmy. <laughs> My question is about thank eternal you. life. Uh-huh. Um, I, under- I understand if you're a human being, mm-hmm. um, baptized or otherwise, born or unborn, we have been given a gift of eternal life by God. Mm-hmm. But well, okay, now wait, of, baptized or, okay, it depends on what you mean by eternal life, but I think I know where you're going, so go ahead. That, that you spend eternity somewhere. Right. That, that when you die, you don't just, that's it. Correct. Okay, so we were reading the sixth chapter of John and going through the Bread of Life discourse, mm-hmm. and Jesus was saying, unless you eat the, my body and blood, I forget the exact quote, Mm -hmm. because I'm Catholic, and we don't remember that very well, but he said, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you will not have life in you, and Mm -hmm. if you do, I will give you eternal life. Mm -hmm. But I thought we already had eternal life, just because we're people. And so here we need to distinguish between different kinds of life. Um, On the one hand, there's physical or biological life, which is what we have right now while we're alive. But Then there's what you might call existential life, where it's just the fact you continue to exist even if you're not physically or biologically alive. So, for example, um, in uh, when Jesus is being confronted by the Sadducees in Matthew 22, the Sadducees, you know, didn't believe that there was an afterlife, and Jesus tells them, "Well, you don't know uh, the uh, the scriptures because." God is described both as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and it, he's not the God of the dead, but of the living. And so there's some sense, even though Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all lived you know, 2,000 years earlier, um, and therefore they're physically dead, they're not physically alive, they're still alive in some sense, so they clearly continue to exist. And you could call that existential life. Then... And, and that would also be had by people who, who are lost, who, who don't go to heaven. They would continue to exist, but it's just kind of an existential life. Um, then uh, there's, what, there's spiritual life, which is union with God. And that, if it continues beyond death, leads to uh, being gloriously united with God in heaven. It may, you may require a little cleanup in purgatory first, but if you're spiritually united with God when you die, when you leave physical life, then you're guaranteed that eternal spiritual life with God. So we have three different kinds of, of, of life on the table. One is mere existence, one is biological life, or physical life, or embodied life, and another is spiritual life. And usually when um, Scripture talks about eternal life, it is using eternal life to mean eternal life with God, that spiritual life that we talked about. And so if you take the term eternal life in that sense as meaning eternal life with God, then it wouldn't apply to people who are lost, who turn their backs on God, um, although they will continue to have what I just named existential life. They'll continue to exist.